Hello, everyone, and thanks very much for joining us uh, yet again on a very sunny afternoon, I'm pleased to say. Uh, I'm Simon Eddles, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to our latest virtual training event. Um, we're delighted today to be joined by uh, two wonderful uh, partners. Each supplier is going to deliver a general training session, which will last 10 minutes, one after the other. If you have any questions during those training presentations, please use the Q&A facility as usual, as there'll be a live 10 minute Q&A session at the end of the webinar. And we'll try and get many through as many of those questions as we can. So we're joined today by the Cook Islands and the Italian Tourist Board. Both are keen to give you their latest destination updates as we emerge from the pandemic. We also have some great prizes up for grabs today. Firstly, a £20 Amazon voucher. We won instantly after each presentation. All you have to do is answer one simple question relating to the presentation. Enter your answer on chat and we'll announce the winners live. Um, our two partners will also be giving away some wonderful prizes towards the, the end of the webinar. These include a Cook Islands Black Pearl and a coffee table book and a branded goodie bag courtesy of the Italian Tourist Board. So let's crack on. Well, first of all, quickly say hello to Elena and to Ian. Elena, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm great. I'm great, right, thank you. I'm in Italy at the moment, so. Oh my very, goodness. Very, very fortunate, yes. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're very fortunate to be in Italy, um, but we, we have some Italian weather here. I'm sure Ian will testify to that. On Are you on the Isle of Wight, Ian? I am. So Kira on everybody. And I noticed Carol wrote on the chat bar, at least it's not raining. Well, unfortunately, Carol, it's raining here on the Isle of Wight at the moment. I have to say what I found, I, I'm going to have to laugh in because not only did I look, you look behind you and you're you, in our picture. Obviously, there's one of the is Rarotonga or some one of the Cook Islands is there. It doesn't look much like the Isle of Wight. No, it's, it, <laughs> the similarity is it's an island. That's uh, and and I think the reason I got the job was because they say island people understand island people, so uh, so things aren't so different. Well, I'm very glad. Well, um, just so that everyone understands, in 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 terms of what we're doing, um, before you start your presentation, in as well, can I ask? I understand your borders have now opened to New Zealand. Can you give us a bit of an update on what's working with that? Sure. So we have what we call QFT, quarantine free travel now to New Zealand. That started on the 17th of May and it allows anybody who's resident in New Zealand for at least 14 days. So one, four days to travel to the Cooks. And apart from filling an online entry form, there are no restrictions, no PCR tests no quarantine uh, when they get to the Cook Islands. Um, they may get their temperature checked, uh, if, but it, it, it's, it's random. Um, and then when they return back to New Zealand, again, no, no restrictions. Um, so we started that, like I said, just over two weeks ago. Um, we're, we're hoping to extend it out to Australia uh, in the coming, uh, coming months and then the rest of the world. We are, our hands are tied a little bit with um, New Zealand. They are our gatekeepers. So, you know, it, technically a British person could come to the Cook Islands if they can get into New Zealand. Um, and that's the challenge at the moment. So, uh, um, but we, we hope from what we understand, what the New Zealand authorities, it's gonna be early into 2022. Um, and you should be able to safely travel all the way through through to the Cooks. So, okay, uh, well, thank you for that update. Um, I think it's now time for us to get moving, get your presentation started, and I'll um, I'll see you after Elenia's for our Q and A session. Perfect. Okay. Kiorana, everybody welcome. My name is Ian Griffiths and I'm the UK Manager for Cook Islands Tourism. And over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to introduce you to our lover little paradise. We're located in the South Pacific, in the heart of the Polynesian Triangle. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Polynesian Triangle encompasses Hawaii to the north, New Zealand to the south, and as far over beyond Tahiti to Easter Island. 
any destination within that triangle, Cook Islands included, so Tonga, Samoa, French Polynesia, Hawaii and New Zealand, all share cultural similarities. We're a true Polynesian destination. We're not in normal times at the moment, but in normal times we have regular flights between Auckland and Rarotonga, Cook Islands, taking just four hours, anything up to three flights per day. And just between us and New Zealand, you'll find the international date line. So if you are in New Zealand first, you can leave on a Monday and arrive one day earlier into the Cook Islands on a Sunday. We have weekly flights to Sydney, six and a half hours away, weekly flights to Tahiti, just two and a quarter hours away, but the majority of British clients are heading off to Los Angeles at the end of their trip, um, and we're just 10 hours away from Los Angeles with its numerous connections over to the United Kingdom. When you reach the Cook Islands, you're gonna find 15 islands in total, the main island of Rarotonga, and our second most visited island of Atataki are found in our southern group. And then in our northern group, we have islands that are less developed for tourism. Whilst landmass, we're one of the smallest nations in the world. Actually, if you look at our ocean, two million square kilometers of it, we're one of the largest. And that two million square kilometers of ocean, the majority is a marine reserve, the largest marine reserve in the world. When you arrive in the Cooks, the International Airport is on the island of Rarotonga. What you're looking at here is a volcanically created island risen up from the abyss of the Pacific Ocean. Mountainous interior, flat coastal plains, fringed by that coral reef protecting our beaches. To the north of the picture, you'll see a little white line, and that's a runway at our International Airport. If you were to leave the airport, we have one continuous road that goes all the way around the island. And you'll find yourself, if you were to con drive continuously, just over 30 minutes later, back where you started. The island is only small, 32 kilometers in circumference. And the south of the island is where you'll see that coral reef at its widest point. And that gives us 22 kilometers or 15 miles of uninterrupted public beaches. We have a sunrise side, a sunset side, but actually there's only 15 minutes difference between the two. So if you book your clients in the wrong one by mistake, it's not a big deal. 15 minutes away and they can enjoy the sunrise that they wanted or the sunset along with a cocktail that they really wanted. Our main town of Avarua is up in the north and that's the hubbub of the island. Just 10,000 people live here in Rarotonga and for a total population of 18,000 people in the Cook Islands. People come often for a stopover after a trip to New Zealand and they expect it's just a beach destination. They expect our warm hospitality, which we deliver on, and they experience modern, authentic Polynesian culture. So that balance between the traditional and the modern, we've got down to a T. Here in the Cook Islands, we don't have large hotels. We, you don't get stuck in a resort. You get to mix with the locals. You go to a restaurant, you go to a bar, and it will be locals that are there. People come for what we don't have. We're not commercialised. We don't have traffic lights, no international hotel chains, no fast food outlets such as McDonald's, Burger King, Starbucks. Everything is owner operated in the Cooks by locals. And we build nothing higher than the tallest coconut tree, which is actually about three storeys high. We're a safe destination. We have a clean, safe, friendly environment, no poisonous snakes or spiders on land, and we have no dangerous cultures or traditions. With a small community, everyone looks out for each other, and we all look out for the tourists. In this picture, you can see commercialised Rarotonga. Most people have a small holding um, and live off the land. We're an easy destination to explore. You can drive around the island in just 30 minutes or so. If you don't want to drive, you can take a scooter, 
um, a very common form of transport. Now helmets are compulsory. You can cycle around the island in about two hours, or you can go from side to side across the mountainous interior, hiking in about three hours. If that's all a bit too adventurous or strenuous, we have a bus. Well, in fact, we have two buses. One goes clockwise around the island every hour, and one leaves and goes anti-clockwise around the island. As an island destination, we have all the water-based activities. We have diving, we have snorkeling, we have stand-up paddleboarding. We have whales coming into the vicinity. The humpback whales come in from July until September, October. So we have pristine waters. Remember the size of that marine reserve. Or you can experience the interior, see where people are living. People here in the on the cycles are actually cycling across a taro plantation, the main staple and starch of the South Pacific. You can go by quad bikes, dune buggies, any way that you want to. Remember, we're just 32 kilometres around, and on Rarotonga alone, we have over 50 restaurants and cafes. We have fantastic resort hotels, only small, owner operated, but we encourage people wherever they're staying, be it a five star hotel or a two star hotel, to go and eat out. Every restaurant is locally operated um, and the food is a fusion of Polynesian cuisine. On from Rarotonga, if you've got a little bit more time, come up and visit the island of Aotearoa, half island, half lagoon. What you're looking at there is 45 kilometres circumference all the way around that lagoon. So you could lift up Rarotonga and put it inside the middle. Just five or six metres deep in the middle, going down to the abyss of the Pacific outside the lagoon. Just 1,200 people call Aotearoa their home. And at any one time, we probably have no more than 150 tourists, including day trippers coming up to Aotearoa. It's easily reached, just a 45 minute flight north, and we have three or four of those flights each day operated by Air Rarotonga. Um, to experience the lagoon. Tony Wheeler, founder of Lonely Planet, said the world's most beautiful lagoon, and I, for one, am not going to argue with him. We have cruise boats taking people out there. You can get your passport stamped on a, on a desert island. It really will be the jewel in your crown. So when are you going to come to the Cook Islands? Most UK visitors combine it with a trip to New Zealand and therefore are coming to us between November and March. Temperatures are higher. We have heavier showers in the morning, but actually it's a very, very pleasant time to come you will get warm, long days. Our most popular season is actually June to August, and this is where our New Zealand visitors are escaping their winter. So actually, the best time to come is actually November through to February. Coming into the Cook Islands, what are the entry requirements? Well, we expect six months of validity on the passport. We don't need a visa from anybody, but bear in mind you will have entered either New Zealand, Australia or the USA prior to coming to the Cooks and they will have entry requirements. On arrival, you'll need to show the immigration officer a copy of your return ticket. It can be a printout of the itinerary. If it's an e-ticket, that is fine. And also details of the accommodation that is booked on arrival. It is compulsory to have accommodation booked in advance. So I'm going to end it there. Meitaki Mata, thank you very much. Please take a look at cookislands.travel, our website. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Or contact me and you can find my details at cookislands.travel. Many thanks. Meitaki Mata. Wonderful. Um, thank you very much for that, Ian. That was fantastic. Um, so, I hope you were all listening carefully, um, as now we have the opportunity to win our first spot prize. 
which is a 20 pound Amazon voucher. Um, by the way, we have recently been asked, and so I'm explaining once again, um, how the winners for these prizes are selected. So to explain before each webinar, um, one of my colleagues pre-selects a random number relating to each question. As an example, we might choose eight and 43. Um, that being the case, the winners would be the eighth and the 43rd agent to answer the questions correctly. The numbers selected are changed each time to make sure that I don't win. No, to make sure that every agent has an equal opportunity of winning. I hope that helps everyone understand how it works. So agent, we're gonna, agents, we're gonna use the chat function for this. Um, so get ready, fingers on chat function. And the question for the 20 pound Amazon voucher is, what currency is used in the Cook Islands? What's the currency of the Cook Islands? Okay, I can see answers flooding in, which is great. Um, and they're coming in at in great numbers, which is superb. Okay, uh, if you, one of my colleagues will already have selected a winner, which is, which is good. Um, and I'm going to be receiving that, he says, hopefully any second. Okay. Um, my goodness, everyone's answered now. That's fantastic. Okay. And the winner, the winner is, my goodness gracious me, if his first name was slightly different, he's on the plane. Well, in fact, he doesn't even fly anywhere, actually, but he's in the Euro squad and he's Actual name is Stephen Bellingham, not Jude, but Stephen Bellingham. Well done, Stephen. Fantastic. You are our winner of a £20 Amazon voucher. So congratulations to you. Um, the correct answer, if you didn't know, was the New Zealand dollar. So well done to Stephen. That's fantastic. Um, it's now time to welcome our second presenter. So let's say hello to Elenia Coco. Elenia, she's the Travel Trade Manager for the Italian State Tourist Board. Hi, Elenia, how are you today? Yeah, I am okay. Um, I think uh, someone needs to allow me in because I cannot start the video. Okay, I can I can hear. Yeah. Uh, there Hi. she is. There you are. Here I am. Fantastic. Hello. <laughs> and I understand that you are, so you're, you're in Italy. So yeah, tell me yeah. whereabouts, whereabouts in Italy are you today? I'm in Sardinia at the moment. Oh wow! And so it's uh, it's very nice and beautiful. Actually, this this uh, this screen is not actually my live screen, so I'm not looking at this at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the window, but this is Sardinia. Yes, has been taken in, in Sardinia. And, and is that? Uh, tell me, Elenia, is this sort of? Uh, are you working this afternoon with us? just because you're on holiday in Sardinia or are you working in Sardinia at the moment? No, I'm doing a little bit of both. Uh, oh. and, um, and, and I really was very curious to, to actually check, uh, uh, to actually, I mean, to check the situation myself and how, how, he, you know, how it is, uh, how people are living. So I have, um, have a very positive um, response uh, um, to how things are handled. Actually, Sardinia, along with a couple of other regions, uh, it has been put on a white uh, sort of list. We have all the, the different colors, and basically, the white is, is less, the less, uh, um, well, the, 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 the freer one, basically, where you have a very, very, very limited restriction. The only restriction is basically on uh, social distance and the use of the mask. Other than that, all the restaurants and all the facilities are open. And so people is enjoying this beautiful sunshine. We've got 27 degree at the moment. So it's definitely, you know, not at the moment, it has been going on for a while. So yeah, it's, um, it's a shame that uh, we're still um, some sort, I mean, yeah, we're still kind of um, not free to go anywhere we want, but um, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's going very well. I I was going to say, I, I, I don't think it's a shame for you at all, because you don't seem to be stopped from going anywhere. Oh, exactly. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that, that's why I was, I was like, you know, it's just uh, I, re I really needed to, to just to go. Just to work somewhere I, I, else. Yeah, I really felt that, that I really need to go. Unfortunately, 
I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a bit spoiled in terms of traveling. So I travel <laughs> a lot and uh, I was like, oh no, I really need to get on a plane. I was so happy to get on a plane. <laughs> I'm very happy <laughs> for you. I, I feel as though I need to try this sort of thing, but um, it's not the same sitting in my front room with my laptop, I can assure you. But anyway, let's um, let's move on now. Let's hear more. Uh, let's Let's watch your presentation and hear more about what's happening in Italy. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining Travel Bulletin training webinar with us today. My name is Ilenia Coco, I'm a training manager for the Italian Tourist Board. And I would like to start the presentation with a, a lovely video just to remind you um, a little bit about Italy. Enjoy. <laughs> What is it that makes a country extraordinary? Its monuments? Its art? Its cities reflecting its history? Italy is bursting with beauty. Beauty you can admire, beauty you can immerse yourself in. But nothing tells the Italian story more than its tastes and aromas. An essence you can only discover when you live it fully. An essence that awakens memory and all the senses becoming almost tangible in a glass of Prosecco, surrounded by the hills. In a pizza, fresh out of the oven at the foot of Vesuvius, taste and aroma transport us to the places where they were created. To the names and origins we proudly protect, they evoke the intimate connection between humankind, enchanted lands, and majestic cities. They are the guardian of our history, the heritage of traditions dating back centuries. Living on in the age-old skills repeated by new generations. Telling us who we are today while whispering to us about the future, encapsulated in our products and carrying our greatest art, the art of living. And there is no greater value worth protecting, nor better product worth exporting. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. Um, so now we are we are approaching the summer holidays. Italy is reopening its border from the second um, uh, the second half of May. So I would like to just remind you how um, you know you can suggest your clients uh, some coastal resorts in Italy. I'm going to start with one of the most famous one. This is uh, Cinque Terre, Liguria. I'm going to go through some nice pictures just to remind you um, the product on offer. This is Sardinia, one of the most famous. Um, um, pictures that you can find online. Then we got uh, another island from Sardinia to Sicily. This is the breathtaking view of Taormina. Um, that's uh, this is um, uh, the amphitheater. And then we got uh, another uh, very Italian destination, uh, which is uh, Tropea. These pictures are not altered, I have to say. These are natural color. We haven't altered any of it. So the blue sea is what you're gonna find when you go either in you know, one of these uh, locations just mentioned. Um, this is a Trulli. Um, a Trulli is a cone-shaped accommodation that is still in use in Puglia. We are in Puglia. And um, nowadays, uh, Trulli has been uh, um, also, um, they, they changed their, um, they use and now they became hotels or guest houses. And um, another very summary product is the lake. Um, there is a very strong connection between the Brits and our Italian lakes. So this is Lake Como, one of the most famous one, along with, oh, sorry, along with uh, uh, the uh, Lake uh, uh, Garda as well. Lake Orta is a smaller version of the two, much more tranquil, much more uh, relaxing, I would say. And uh, our cities are uh, the uh, probably they have about uh, they are able to attract about seventy percent of our visitors. And uh, I'm going to go through some of the main cities that actually they were the city that um, suffered the most during this uh, year and a half. And this is actually a great occasion for your client to visit some. Um, less crowded city, let's put it at that. They're all coming back to life and uh, probably they won't, we won't have any, um, any other occasion to visit those cities as they are now. 
Uh, linked to the city is our UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, Italy has more than 55 UNESCO sites, and we're going to go through the most visited one today, just to give you um, an idea on, um, you know, what we have, um, you know, uh, in Italy that uh, it, it's definitely worth a visit. We've got a tranquil, beautiful natural setting of the Dolomites. We got Ferrara and Po River Delta. So if your clients are visiting Tuscany or uh, they are visiting Emilia Romagna, this is definitely a uh, very tranquil and not a bit track destination to offer. We've got one of the most romantic cities in the world. We've got Verona with the um, uh, most famous balcony of Giulietta and the uh, Arena di Verona where the um, opera festival is organized every summer. San Gimignano, a little Borgo, um, Borgo is, is basically the Italian word for a small um, hamlet, small village, and San Gimignano is one of the most uh, uh, well-preserved uh, medieval uh, town that we have in Italy. Uh, historic city of Florence, of course, uh, and historic city of Rome is another um, uh, beautiful uh, UNESCO site to visit. This is the um, uh, Trevifante. And if you are in Rome, you want to spend a nice day out, I suggest you Adrian's Villa and Villa d'Este at Tivoli. And uh, Pompeii is, uh, the, is in Naples, so a couple of hours uh, uh, train by Rome if you want to just uh, um, spend a day and commute from Rome. Um, Pompeii is probably the most famous archaeological sites uh, uh, that, um, that we have in Italy. Uh, Pompeii was destroyed by the Vesuvio eruption in 79 BC. Um, Matera is probably not uh, that well known as the other cities, but Matera has been the European uh, city of culture in 2019. There's been a setting of many moving. The latest one, and actually is still, um, he hasn't come out yet, is the 007. So check it out. Uh, this is us being filmed in Matera. And the last but not least, our beautiful Amalfi Coast. Uh, that is, again, definitely worth a visit. Um, linked to the, what I was saying earlier about Matera and, and uh, uh, the Amalfi Coast, these are all small hamlet villages dated between medieval and renaissance time that uh, can be combined uh, maybe with a couple of nights, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, in combination with a visit with the main cities. This is the quintessential Italian, uh, Italian life. And I know that now quite a few tour operators are selling it. So maybe ask for your Italian provider um, more information about it. And this is another picture just to show you that we've got about 300 um, and more, more than 300 Borghi scattered all over Italy. Um, uh, in Italy, you can obviously um, fly internally, you can drive, not very recommended, especially not in the cities, but you can take a train, which is actually one of the most amazing, uh, amazing services that we have in Italy. Definitely a uh, good value uh, for money. Um, then, uh, you know, always suggest your client to travel by train. Rome, Florence is just an hour. Rome, Flor uh, Rome, Venice, a couple of hours. So very, very easy. But don't forget to suggest, uh, well, not to suggest, to tell your clients to validate the tickets because otherwise, you know, and they might have, you might have a problem with the, um, with the controller and, uh, um, you know, just even, even if, if they purchase the ticket online, they have to exchange it with the paper ticket and validate it before they enter on the train. And this is a sign to watch out if the, if you, if the clients are driving. And it's a, very, it's a limited uh, traffic area only for residents. So if you want to know more about Italy, become an Italian specialist, I suggest you to link on our uh, Italy online train book order to pay to win some amazing prizes. These are the prizes you can win, and one of you, a lucky one of you, will receive also a goodie bag from us, a branded Italian um, Italy goodie bag. And um, thank you very much, and please keep in touch. These are my contact details. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so thank you very much for joining. <laughs> Sorry, that was me jumping ahead. Thank you uh, to Elenia too for uh, a wonderful presentation. Um, and it's, um, we know an awful lot more about your amazing country. So we know what our wonderful agents can offer UK tourists too. So we're going to do another spot prize now. So remember, this is on the chat function and it's a 
20 pound Amazon voucher that we're giving away once more. So everyone fingers on keyboards to type into the chat function. And the question is, which was, what's the name of the city that's the home of Romeo and Juliet? The city that was the home of Romeo and Juliet. Okay, oh my goodness gracious me, they're piling in now. Um, right, okay, my colleague will be using her uh, judgment and the mathematical calculation to see who is the winner. My goodness gracious me, we have a winner. And it is, it's Jackie Brady. Well done, Jackie. That is fantastic. Anyone who didn't know the answer, the correct answer was Verona. Uh, so well done, Jackie, and uh, congratulations to her. Right, I'm going to welcome everyone, please, uh, back to the um, to Elenia and to Ian, please, to come back and join me, if you can do. Okay, so it's um, it's time for to do a little bit of Q and A. Um, Elenia, I'm going to need you to. You've got your mic on. That's good. I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to hear you then. Um, Right, uh, Ian, you've very deviously been answering questions on on the which is which has given me slightly less to ask because you've already answered some of them. I'm sorry, I didn't realise I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> you can ask them again though, because I think the reply only went back to one person. No, if you've been if you've been replying singularly, um, I think it's worth. It, it's certainly worth asking something about the vaccine rollout. But so um, from your point of view, obviously, the Cooks has a relatively small population. Um, yeah. Give us a give us an idea on how the vaccine rollout is going and if there are any vaccine or other requirements in terms of entry. Sure. So, as I said, we opened the borders the week of the 17th of May. That was the same week we started vaccinating the population. We... You're right, we have a population of about 17,000 people at the moment. Um, and interestingly, everyone's very receptive in getting vaccinated. We've had no cases of COVID at all, uh, right from the start. So you'd think there may be that bit of reluctance to, to vaccinate for something that's not there, but um, the vaccination is free. So we're, we're all happily being vaccinated. Um, as for visitors, there's no requirement that they're vaccinated um, and no testing needed either. So um, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. OK, um, Elenia, could I ask you, I've got some um, uh, a couple of questions in terms of how things work with your uh, colour coded system. Um, uh, could I ask in terms of um, where you are and how you find out where you're going to, and what colour coding it's in? Is that something that's on your website or how does that, how do you find out about that? Yes, um, all the information oh. Italia.it, which is our website that is constantly updated. At the moment, actually, um, we are kind of trying to simplify the information. We got only two colours, which are white and yellow. Um, the white uh, region are the region that, uh, as I said earlier, including Sardinia, along with Molise, Frulli, Venezia, Giulia, that have um, basically no, uh, no limitation in, in outdoors in certain areas. Um, other than that, uh, we don't have a curfew here at the moment, those regions. Um, and um, for the region that are not labeled as white, the curfew is um, until uh, midnight. Uh, uh, but the curfew is going to be um, it's going to be um, not longer in place uh, from uh, the end of June. Um, let me just give you the date. Um, the third, at the end of the third week, sorry, I just lost, I was just actually looking at, at, at it now. Um, at the end of June, yes, there will be no curfew and uh, slowly, slowly, all the region will become white. 
So okay. that means that by the end of June, uh, traveling to Italy would be very easy. And there will be, um, there will be very, very limited restriction um, in place. Uh, um, vaccination is going, is going well. They actually uh, pick up quite well. Um, also because they are using the Johnson & Johnson monodose, obviously that uh, you know, speed up the process. Uh, um, about 40% uh, uh, of the population got the first dose uh, and 21% uh, is fully vaccinated. To enter in Italy, you don't have to be fully vaccinated. Well, obviously, if you are, you know, better, but uh, um, the restriction are, you just need to present uh, um, uh, either a PCR or um, antigenic test, one of the two, and then uh, uh, you need to register online, and that's it. Um, okay, else. fantastic. I, I uh, want to move on so I can get a, a couple more questions in. Ian, um, can I ask you, well, Sorry, thank you. Yeah. By the way, Elenia, I think we might have a problem with your camera or something. I, I It may be me, and my, but I can't see you moving at all. So... Um, I don't know quite what's oh, wrong with it, but anyway, ha have a chat, or maybe Hasmuk, oh. my colleague, will be able to help with that. But um, Ian, back to you. Um, I've got Ada, who uh, Firmston Evans has asked, are we looking more at 2022 and beyond because of the sort of Australia and New Zealand restrictions in terms of travel? Absolutely. So we're, we're ready. Um, we're ready to open up. our borders, as I said, have already opened initially. Um, it was always going to be to New Zealand first, as I said, they're our kind of gatekeepers. And from what we're here, they're not looking to open much before January, you know, and that's been optimistic um, for, for them to open January. We could possibly jump ahead and open up to the US um, market with the LA flight. Um, but we may upset our New Zealand um, uh, our New Zealand colleagues if we were to do that. And I, and I say that because New Zealand funds us. We're, we're what's called a country of the realm. So if there's an emergency, they're the ones that come into our, uh, our rescue. So obviously we want to keep them on our side. Would I book anything before January 2022? No. Um, and realistically, probably later than that. One of the things that's come up as well, I've, I've noticed, Ian, is that I've got a couple of questions, both on the same theme. Um, so could I ask, in terms of your um, nature park or the sea park or whatever, uh, 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 apologies for my marine reserve. ability. Well, there you go. The nature <laughs> reserve that is, that is the millions of square miles of sea. Um, is therefore, it's one of those things, is, is it very much a, uh, a top destination from a diving point of view? And can people take or paddies or anything like that there? Yeah. So we're a destination with diving rather than a dive destination. So if okay. you compared us to our neighbours over in Fiji or uh, the two Amato Islands, part of French Polynesia, um, they've got a lot more soft corals, um, and so the, there's a lot more colour to their diving. Uh, we do have paddy dive centres. We've got three of them on Rarotonga, um, one up in Etataki. And on every dive, you will see sharks, turtles, your, your big fish, your, your pelagic fish, your tunas, your barracudas, um, as well as the uh, a pretty nice reef system. It gets a little bit samey. So if you were going to plan on a two, three week diving holiday, and that's the kind of holiday I would plan personally, after about four or five days, you'll think oh, this is getting a little bit the same. So that's why well, we're not really a destination purely for divers. Come end of August through to about November, you've got the humpback whales. So when you're out on a dive boat, you will be out there with the whales as well. If you don't, you probably won't see them underwater, but you'll definitely hear them underwater. Um, and then when you're back on the boat, you'll you'll see them. I um, yeah, no, that's that the the wildlife side of things is is fascinating. That's that's certainly something to bear in mind. Elenia, sorry, I'm glad to see you're back with us now. Um, I well, I could see you all along. It was just a, a photo of you, though. I could tell your lips weren't moving and you were speaking, oh. which is which is. Me I, now. It's no? a good trick if you can do it, as far as I'm concerned. No. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, so, so you cannot see me now. Moving. No, I can do. I can. We've got we've got the full picture, Elenia. You are in glorious Technicolor with a with a wonderful um, with a wonderful vista behind you. So um, I've got Tracy Milligan asks. Uh, she's due to go to Sicily at the beginning of this September. Um, is there any talk of the islands, i.e. you're on Sardinia at the moment, and Sicily is obviously another, um, making it on to our green list? Has that been discussed, do you know? Well, we are hoping to be put on a green list, uh, um, probably not uh, this time at the end of when it's gonna be, uh, when is it, the third week of June. So we really are confident that it is gonna be put on a green list by then. Um, I don't see why not. I mean, the number of positive is really, really little, and is actually um, and the number of, of vaccinated people is higher than uh, the EU um, kind of average. So, I don't see why not. Yeah, there we are a lot of be... talks that are happening at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so I, I am very confident that um, by the end of June it would be it would be in a green list. Okay, um, and Ian, can I ask? I know this is very much up in the air, but from your point of view. If you, ha if you start to move to something that looks more normal by the middle of next year, which I think is it's probably fairly likely or more likely anyway, isn't it? Um, I've got a, a couple of questions asking how many people sort of go to the cooks from the UK. And obviously, um, when you take me and the other team on the fam trip, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. How many people do you do you hope to get out there? Do you take do you take a fan trips out there, and do you take um, or uh, sort of do good numbers of Brits go? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we get about three and a half thousand uh, British residents going, and I say British residents as opposed to British passport holders because there's quite a lot of British passport holders living in New Zealand who who obviously pop up. Um, so. We've got quite a stable market and we're expecting that um, everything's about connecting when you get back and seeing friends and family. And obviously there's a lot of uh, British people with family in New Zealand. So we're, we're hoping to capitalise on, on that, where they've travelled down to see their friends and relatives um, when they've been allowed. And then either as a whole family or just on their way home, come through the Cook Islands. So um, we, we, we hope to get our numbers pretty much back to where they were. Um, we don't have backpackers coming through and we don't have the, the volunteer market. So those are the markets that would traditionally suffer and we probably won't be suffering. No, absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And obviously there is, from that point of view as well, Ian, I know we've spoken separately about this. The, the islands have lost a number of people who worked presumably in hospitality over the, over the last sort of... Um, 15 months and hopefully there'll be a, a re-employing of, of people as things go grow back out of that as well. Yeah and, and you know everyone in the Cook Islands has a New Zealand passport so uh, whilst we've been closed for 14 months you know they've had to go and search for jobs in New Zealand or, or Australia. Um, we, we've always had that cycle it's just been kind of exaggerated a little bit. Um, most people go off fall in love in New Zealand um, and then come back with the young families and move back to the cook. So it, it's a cycle we're used to, but like I say, it's been a bit exaggerated for the last 14 months. No, of course. Um, Elenia, can I ask you, in terms of, I've got a, a number of people have asked about restaurants um, and cities, and I know it's complicated to go through the whole process of which cities are in which uh, region and therefore in which colour-coded uh, scenario for whether there's a curfew or not but as a rough guide is it is it still the case for all those not in a not in the sort of least um restricted areas that you wear masks with uh, when you go to sit you know when you're walking around the streets but not when you sit down to have a meal or something like that oh basically yeah to make to make things a little bit easier uh so basically we are um we are doing uh, um and, and until well from the seventh, so a couple of days, the curfew is going to be moved at midnight. So at the moment is at, at eleven, except the white region like um, um, like Sardinia, for example. But slowly, slowly, um, everybody is going to put on a white list. So let's just uh, give some road map just to um, 
exemplify uh, 21st of June, um, all the curfew will be abolished everywhere. Um, so um, you have so, the. So you you'll know, be out partying till 2 a.m. on the 21st. No, exactly. So there, is, there is no curfew anymore. Um, the, the only limitation is social distances. Uh, um, that's that's will stay in place and masks uh, indoors, especially. Um, and obviously, you know, no, you don't need to wear because they asked me, oh, do I need to wear a mask on the beach? No, not at all. <laughs> it would be, no, exactly. I mean, just use a little bit of, you know, obviously common sense as well, but the law at the moment uh, required to wear masks indoors. But when you sit down at the restaurant, obviously like in UK, you take your mask off and you only use it when you need to pay the bill or go maybe indoors, so I don't know, to, to, to use the, 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 the toilet or just to go through indoors. Other than that, it's very nice and relaxed. And, um, and it's just business um, almost as usual. Well, we're, it's what we have to hope for. Um, and I, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that there's a frustration everywhere that we want to get back to that. Um, uh, Ian, it's great to hear that the, um, the cooks are, at least the people are all healthy and well and everyone's sort of getting on with life. Uh, I think they're very, very, I know this sounds very sort of trite, but they, they're, they're obviously very fortunate to have not had any touch of this disease, which is, oh, sorry, not disease, but you know what I mean anyway. So yeah. it's good news on that front. And thank you for the update, Elenia. And I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we encourage people to go to the site to see any more in terms of detail as well. Um, it's time now to move on to our uh, competition time. Um, any unanswered questions that we haven't dealt with, um, we will pass on to Ian and Elenia as well. Um, and they'll come back to you over the next few days with their replies. So competition time. We have two wonderful partner prizes up for grabs. So agents, get your pens and papers ready. You will enter the competition by submitting your answers via the Travel Bulletin website. So it's travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. The closing date is 4 p.m. on the 4th of June. That's this Friday. Um, all of our lucky winners will be notified next week. Um, the suppliers are now going to tell you what their prizes are and what the questions are as well. So Ian, let's start with you. Okay, so on, as a prize, we have a coffee table book. Oh, you can't see it when I hold it up against the background. <laughs> Trust me, there's a coffee table book and there's a black pearl, which are cultured in our Northern group of, of islands. And questions, oh, I'm not ready to give you these. Bear with me. How many questions do I have to give you? It's only, it's only, it's only one. Shall I give it to you? It is how you many islands? <laughs> you take it in. Go on. You know what it is. Do you know what, which one it is? What? How many Cook Islands are there? That's it. Okay. How many islands make up the Cook Islands? That is the question. The, the only reason I was nervous then was because I thought if you ask a different question to the one that's on the website, we'll be in terrible trouble. Uh, no, no. <laughs> So yes, just to recap, wonderful, a Cook Islands Black Pearl and a disappearing coffee table book, um, which which disappears. Always oh, there, you see, he's got it, it works. I worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got that. And the question to be filling in on our website is how many islands make up the Cook Islands? Now it's your turn, Alenia. Um, so please tell us about your prize and then about your question, please. So the prize is going to be an uh, Italian branded goodie bag, uh, which includes some merchandise like baseball hats, uh, pens, uh, t shirt etc. And the question is, uh, how many UNESCO sites there are in Italy? Wonderful. So a, a top Italian goodie bag from the Italian State Tourist Office. And the question was, how, how many, many UNESCO World Heritage sites does Italy have? Wonderful. Apologies. I, I keep butting in and I should just stay silent. Um, so we're coming to the end of our uh, Travel Bulletin webcast. If you want to watch it again to recap on any information, it'll be viewable tomorrow, not only on our website, but also on YouTube and on our Facebook page. Thanks very much again to our supplier partners. Um, please uh, give everyone a wave and thank you very much to the agents for joining in. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye.